elephant dung. That is a massive dropping. <laughs> you can see just how much they're eating. Right? Oh my gosh, Bear was picking up the poop, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> just gag reflex just, just kicked in. I mean, this being this fresh, if you had to, you get the juice out of that, and that would hydrate you. I've done mm. that before. Have you really? Yeah. I mean, look how much you get out. <laughs> you know? Because an elephant's digestion is so fast, it's still got a lot of fluids in it, and especially if you boil it, it's going to keep you hydrated. And out here, when it gets hot, it is all about hydration. Elephant dung. There you go. Save your life. Yummy. You know what? Way to just start the day off right and just get right into a big pile of runny <laughs> OK, you hold that. Or even better, you hold that. Perfect. <laughs> OK, squeeze, squeeze. Hold it right up. Oh, we're squeezing it in. Squeeze. Hold the hand up. There you go. This is great. Oh, squeeze, squeeze. The poop was actually hot. OK, last bit. Here we go. There's nothing quite like just squeezing that green, runny poop through my fingers. It would keep filling this out. I don't know why Bear put it in the canteen. Another cup full of that would be, would be good to go. Lovely. I actually do know why. I feel like we're going to have to eat that later, and I'm, like, I'm prepping myself. They are looking at us like... What are what you doing with my poop? <laughs> <laughs> Stick it in my pack. There you go. That's just going to smell tremendous in my backpack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Here we go. This is like nature's smell. New, it's good. New smell. Here we go. We better. Oh, we better. <laughs> there you go. You've earned your, earned your elephant dung stripes. I love it. I love it. Mm. It was like a little spa. Just, you know, exfoliation. Just pack it up and take it back to LA with me. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. I don't know if you can tell, I took some of that back home with me and have been exfoliating with it, but. <laughs> All right, so let's just get right down into the poop. What did it smell like? Poop. Um, really elephant, like warm yeah. elephant poop just smells like poop. I, did it no, have a there was a different stench for sure, but I, I don't think I can even explain it. It was very distinct and very unique. And I can tell you, though, when we did taste it, have you ever had, like, spinach and it, like, makes your teeth feel weird? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? It's, like, squeaky. Like, like there's something sticking to your teeth. Yeah, that's how it felt in my mouth. I'm always thinking, where are you getting your spinach? <laughs> that, is, that, is, that was not tasting like spinach. No, it doesn't taste like spinach at all, but it felt like it in your teeth. It was just gross. <laughs> well, let's oh, backtrack. It could save your life. It could. It could save Something my life. To remember. Let's backtrack. How did this come <laughs> to, ha to pass for you, Julianne? Um, a couple of different reasons. Um, I had had a few friends that had been on past seasons. Um, Zach Efron, I did a movie Kate with him, Hudson. and Kate Hudson, and um, they were Barack saying, Obama. Yeah, Barack Obama. You know, we're just best friends. But um, we, uh, yeah, they were telling me how fun it was and how, like, because I love adventure. I grew up, you know, camping and hiking and stuff with my family, and we're always on the lake and just, you know, I'm always the first one to like jump off the cliff while like my brother is looking over and being like, should I do this? And you just seeming being like, you know, so I was like, ah, oh, this would be something that I would really, really enjoy. And I'm a huge fan of bears. So um, there was that component. And I don't know. It's just fun. Ah! I was so excited about the elephant dung. I couldn't wait to go. <laughs> Bear, how do you pick people for the season? What criteria do you look at? Uh, well, we, we've been so lucky, you know, we've often kind of really got the people we've really hoped to get on the show. But we, you know, we draw up a list and then we write to them and uh, and try not to show them too much of the grisly bits and show them the nice bits of other shows. <laughs> and um, and then it's just trying to juggle diaries and stuff. But we don't do a lot of the shows. We try and keep them special and we do with them with the best guests. And we try and do it with people who we think viewers would be really interested to see what they're really like kind of out of their environment, you know, whether it's you know, president away from a podium or someone like Julianne away from the dance floor and the, and the you know, the gloss of a kind of studio. Um, and I think for me, it's the magic of running wild as you get to see a very raw, unkind of glossy side of people that's always the appealing part because it's real, you know. Um, but it's funny, just backstage, one of the girls goes, she goes, is it, is it really like it is? Is it really real? 
You know, and I think often the guests are surprised. I mean, less so you, because you kind of knew it was going to be an adventure, but sometimes they kind of expect there to be a catering truck somewhere or, you know. Um, but I think it's good for these people to be taken out of that sort of really glossy environment just for a little bit, for two days, to have be treated like a normal person and go on a proper boy's own or girl's own or whatever adventure and do it for real, you know. But she shone bright. Julianne was amazing. She, she might look girly, but she's tough as steel. Uh, <laughs> how do you come up with the specific adventures for each person? So why Africa for Julianne, for example? Um, we, try and, we try and push the environments every time and pick different type ones. And also we chat to the guests and say, is there anywhere particularly you'd really love to go? Um, I try and do it where we can film a couple of shows in each environment. Uh, I try not to go too far right or left so I can still say goodnight to the kids. <laughs> That's actually, if I'm honest, that's one of my criteria. <laughs> Try and stay on a similar time zone. So I always have a satellite phone with us, partly for our safety. We have satellite phone, anti-venom, and generally, if we need it, a rifle somewhere tucked away in the gear bags. But a satellite phone is for much for me to say goodnight to the kids. <laughs> and what was in your backpack? Talk me through this. Um, not a lot, but um, you being... didn't have a hair and makeup artist with you. No, no. You didn't not have at a all. catering truck. No, no catering, no hair and makeup, no wardrobe. I mean, I was literally wearing the the poop stained clothes, literally the whole trip. So, um, but no, um, I, I mean, I had maybe a change of uh, shirt or something to sleep in, um, uh, makeup wipes, not makeup wipes, but like uh, refreshing face wipes, face wipes yeah. and uh, like deodorant can spray, <laughs> which we actually used um, yeah. to repel off of like a 150 foot cliff. I saw the clip and I was wondering about that. Like, because you mentioned deodorant and I was like, what? Like, so he doesn't freak out that you smell? What's the deal here? <laughs> like I, I love it when we take girls because you... You know, if you open, as you guys will know, if you open up the zip of a lady's vanity case, there's like a treasure trove of <laughs> survival <laughs> gear in there. And uh, Only you would say it's survival. <laughs> I think everybody else would be like, why do you need all of this stuff? Why do you have eight <laughs> mascaras? No, I did, I Bear's like, you can kill a snake with one. Yeah. I said, would you mind if, we, if I borrowed your body spray? And you looked at me and you went, oh, okay. Uh, you sure, know, not yeah. thinking. No. But actually, we used it to hook a rope across jam it into this rock crevice and rappel off it. And Julianne was going, really? This is never going to hold us. But it's like the principle of, you know, if you've got a stick and you break it like that, it's going to break. But if you hold it close and then try and break it in the middle, it's going to, you can't break it. And uh, she went, okay. I know, I'm looking down over the cliff and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really far down. I hope you know what you're doing. Which uh, I didn't, sure I didn't have a moment. <laughs> I, I, no, that was good. I knew that would work. You know. yeah. It was a little bit more dented by the end than I thought, but yeah, it worked. You, you flicked it off because we were saying that you, we wanted to make sure that we had the rope again instead of just tying it to a rock. So when you flipped it off, it came down. And it was like full on dented, like <laughs> pierced through. I was like, oh my gosh, I thought it was going to be a little less dented than that. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, then you're straight into something else. Yeah. <laughs> Julianne's not great with snakes, is one thing I learned. I was going to ask about that because that seemed to me, from what I saw, your one moment of complete and total, like, kind of shutdown. Yeah, like I, I mean, I was so excited about the adventure. I literally couldn't sleep, and I was just excited about all like the the thrill seeking stuff. But the the snake that that kind of took me a little bit by surprise. We were we actually saw well, Bear saw two cheetahs. I didn't even see them until he pointed them out, and then so that kind of got my heart racing a little bit because I was like, oh, they're like these wild cheetahs, and then we're like crawling and trying to get past them, and we hop up onto this like little or little, it was like a big rock, but it had this little tiny opening that we had to crawl through. So just as I was about to go in, I, I heard like the tss, and I was like, what? <laughs> and I like jumped off, I was like, snake cheetahs, what snakes cheetahs, which, which one am I gonna choose? So um, I ended up crawling next to the snake and we, we made it through, but then Bear wanted to eat it and I was like, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> well, Julianne's going hard left, so I've got her in one hand and then I got the snakes anus in my other hand <laughs> you know i'm trying to kind of pull the two together to see if we can get the snake and then we can make that dinner out of that and she's going no 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 and then i'm going there's nowhere to run because the cheetahs are up there so. yeah. but um th so we, we struck a deal which was if you don't eat the snake you'll eat whatever you know well, you've you got to eat you know you need energy we'll find something else she goes anything oh, I'll what eat did anything you eat else. they were called striped policeman caterpillars right yeah. and the elephant dung 
that we boiled them in. So it was very appetizing. <laughs> it was like Nobu level dining is what you're saying. It was, yeah, it was five star for sure. <laughs> Bear, one thing I... There was, a there was a little bit of gag going on. Oh, it literally, thank goodness for cr editing because it probably took me a good like 20, 30 minutes to try to even get it in my mouth. <laughs> I kept like trying to go like this and it would go past me. <laughs> I do think it's such a, it, it is hard. I sort of take it for granted, I think, because we've done it so much. But I think it is hard for people eating survival food. And good for you, you know, total <laughs> respect. It did take you a while, but you, you, you know, you swigged these big old caterpillars down with a whole lot of elephant dung juice. And, and go girl, you know, good for too. you. Just, you know what? It almost looks like a green smoothie, though. Like the ones that cost $10 at Press Juicery. I mean, you there got you for go. free. Exactly, exactly. Some, some survival foods are hard to disguise, as you, you potentially call that a green smoothie. I mean, the, we just finished filming last week with Courtney Cox, and, uh, and we found this rotting sheep in this swamp. <laughs> and I, I stuck the knife into it to see if how rotten it was, and literally some gas explodes, and all these maggots are oozing out. And she'd go, ugh, you know? And um, so I go, well, that's good. We can collect the maggots. But what can we put the maggots in? So she, at this point, the blood's sort of draining from her face. <laughs> so we cut the testicles off, took the testicles out of the sack, filled the testicle sack full of maggots, tied it up in a knot, hung it off the back of her backpack, and then boiled it up later <laughs> like a, I don't know, like a dumpling full of maggots. <laughs> I didn't see the blood return to her face for about three days. <laughs> wow. but, um, but, you know, one of the things I've definitely developed as a respect for our guests who come and they know it's going to be part of it you know but they're still like you know you're hungry you gotta do it and the girls are often they're often tougher than the men you know it's 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 inspiring <laughs> one thing i have to say that i love about the show so much is you get really personal moments with people like the kate hudson episode she was talking about her family life and her upbringing i mean i've honestly never heard her speak about that that candidly before what was something that you learned about julianne that really surprised you um, oh, there's so many lovely moments on this journey, and you, you're right. The, the, the real strength for me of running wild is how honest people are, and I think the wild doesn't judge you. That's a nice thing, you know. It, 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 it doesn't care, you know. Um, but Julianne was honest throughout it, you know. You, you were very honest about some of the experiences you've been through, you know, growing up, you know, being away from home, dancing, some of the challenges you had there, and in a really sort of courageous way. And that's not easy to, to talk about some of that stuff. And I won't spoil it, but it's on the show. And I admire you for your courage, not only on the rock faces, but also for your courage to be able to share those things. Because, you know, it's not easy. But I do think when you, you're, you're honest and you shine light on difficult sub subjects, it goes away. You know, it's a bit like bacteria. If we ever want to clean a sleeping bag, if you haven't got a washing machine for three months up a mountain, you turn it inside out, hang it on the top of your tent, Sunlight hits the bacteria, and it comes out clean. And it's a bit like that with our stuff. You know, when we're honest and we put it out there, it's like a problem shared is hard, isn't it? So good for you. And what did you learn about yourself? Um, that you're not, that you can eat crap. That, but also <laughs> that I'm an open book, obviously. <laughs> and like, I'm just, like, divulging so much information. Um, but it's really because, you know, Bear makes you feel really comfortable. And um, it is in a situation, in a setting where, where you kind of feel like you're stripped of all of your the pressures of kind of maybe who people think you are or who you feel like you need to be. And so it's it, it kind of takes you back to that, like, kind of young child. Um, and I know for me, like, growing up with my family, like, we would go hiking and camping and stuff like that. And so it really brought that kind of back into, uh, yeah, it, back into my life. And, and when we were out in the journey and stuff. It was just, it was fun and it was freeing and it was just, it, yeah, Bear just makes you feel really comfortable and lets you just kind of talk and whatever, you know, whatever my journey was, you know, hopefully it, it you know, resonates with somebody else and, you know, they get inspired by that and, and hopefully that's the case there. Um, but yeah, I, I think just like perseverance. I mean, it was like either run from the, from the snake or the cheetah or just, Go for it. And I think that that was the biggest thing is that, like, if I don't commit, then I'm going to get hurt or I'm going to or I'm going to be more scared or more afraid. So, like, the more I commit, the less afraid I think I was. So, Bear, do you when you get someone when you prep someone for this 
journey, what do you tell them? I mean, do you have very specific guidelines on what they can bring, how they physically can get ready? What's the process? Uh, we always say, come on your own, leave the entourage behind, and trust, trust me, you know, we'll, we'll keep you safe. There might be a few scrapes and bruises and cuts and grazes, but you'll be in one piece. <laughs> And uh, it will be, an, it will be a, hopefully, a really life-affirming experience, but there will be a little bit of pain along the way. Um, and bring a, a bag of fortitude <laughs> <laughs> and enthusiasm, you know, because the thing is, it's easy to start things well, you know, same in life, you know, it's harder to finish them well. And, and I notice with a lot of the people take away, you know, by the time you get to the next day, you've had no sleep and you're freezing cold and you're still wet and suddenly it's like, you know, it, it just gets harder. Um, but that's, that's the magic as well. That's where you see what people are like and you, 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 the honest stuff comes from. But I must say, Julianne especially was incredible. She, you know, her positivity. Initially, you think, is, is, it, is it she really, is she, can somebody be this nice and bubbly even when you're like, free, you know, cold and scared or whatever? And, and she was. So it's a credit to you and it's a, also proof that with so many of our guests, they reach the top of their profession because they've got great attitudes, and they use that attitude, you know, on our journeys, and it shows. You also feel just like a total badass, not going to lie. Like, you're just, like, repelling, and you're just like, oh, it's so good. I feel like I'm, like, the king of the world, and, oh, we got to, like, pull the, um, the flare gun. Wait, he was going to pull it, and I was like, can I pull it, please? <laughs> and so we had it, and it was just like, oh, it's just such a thrill, and the rush, and the adrenaline, and um, I hope that... I can get a lot of my friends to, to do it because it was such well, a life-changing we're, experience. We're building a bit of a club, really, now. Of, it's like the Running Wild Survivors Club. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's good, you know, and they should, people should be proud that they've done it. And, you know, because, as I said, I'm super respectful for people who do it because it's out of your comfort zone. You don't need the money or the fame. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're doing it because you really want to be challenged like this. And... and I think we get less comfortable with stepping out of our comfort zone the more famous people get. But actually, as you guys know, it's important for our edge. You've always got to be out there. So, so good for you. And how much, before we go to the audience, how much did you know about what you were going to experience before you got on the plane? I just knew that I was going into South Africa. I was going to Cape Town. And then they drove us like three hours away. I was passed out in the car because I was so jet lagged. And then I was still it? did not know where I was the whole trip and then um, had no idea. But I just knew that I was with Bear and I knew I was going to be taken care of. And I was just ready. I was just super excited to just fully commit to whatever it was. And um, now I have this like recorded for my life and I can be like, oh, I did that. <laughs> you have kids, you can be like, yeah. mommy was so cool. So cool. I was like Laura Croft, but blonde. Yeah. <laughs> and now let's turn it over to our audience. Hi, thank you for being here. Um, were there any night animals that kept you up at night when you're sleeping? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, speaking of the cheetahs, so uh, w I was not prepared for the cheetahs. I don't even think you were, too, because yeah. you turned to the crew and you were like, okay, we do not mess around. These are wild animals. So I was like, wait, bear is scared? <laughs> I'm really scared now. Um, but we went to sleep, and because I was jet lagged, I didn't sleep a wink. And I really had to pee <laughs> a lot, but I was too scared to go outside and like outside of the little cave and because um, the cheetahs were there and it was raining and all sorts of things. So the, ski the, the cheetahs were the thing that like really scared me. And there were snakes. Yeah, we were in Africa. It was scary. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was sleeping like a baby. <laughs> You're like, ah, the sound of the birds. Yeah, I, I've had to share some amazing camps with great people over the years. It's fun. <laughs> like a couple of days ago, I was, we slept in a pile of leaves with Shaquille O'Neal. That was interesting. <laughs> Literally, all you could see was both of our heads poking out. But, but I said it's like, comp what do you call it, compost? Compost. Compost, you know, and you, you know you stick your hand in the compost. It's warm, isn't it? It's like generating heat. It's like, and it's dry. So I thought this is perfect. It's like soft, dry, and warm. What are you complaining about, Shaq? <laughs> You know, Julianne had to sleep on a rock. You know, you're lucky. And last question, please. Um, hi, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Um, my question is for Julianne. And I, um, there's this quote that says, it's the fear of doing that makes the doing hard to do. So I was wondering, like, what, like, just in this case and just life in general, like, what's worse for you, like, the anticipation of doing something or the actual execution? The actual execution of doing something? Or, the like, the journey getting there? 
I would say that, like, our fear is what actually holds us back, and we don't need that, you know? Like, we're so much more capable of, of what we even, what we are, our limitations are basically what are holding us back in our head. And, like, when you're in your head, you're dead, as, as Tony Robbins actually says, which I think he was just over here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you are, you know? And so, like, when, you, when you're holding your back, when you're holding yourself back that way, I think that that's, that's the only thing in your way. But the journey and the actual experience is, is I think, what makes, what makes the success of fulfillment. And so I don't know if I answered your question correctly, but... Oh, you uh, did. Uh, yeah, you did. But, I, but I think that, yeah, I mean, I'm, whenever I shoot a movie or when we're doing this journey, like, it's really fun to be able to watch the movie at the end of the day or watch this show at the end of the day, but it was so much more fun being there in the moment and, like, actually enjoying it and not being worried about, like, what the end product was going to look like but just like enjoying it and being authentic and real. And when you're like that, I feel like the end product is just gonna be what it is, which is you and real and awesome. <laughs> and Bear, when can we watch this? Uh, these premiere August, August the 1st and the 2nd. Yeah, thanks, Del. Um, NBC, 10 o'clock. And uh, Nick Jonas, one is first, and then Julianne is second, and then we got um, Shaq and Lindsey Vaughn, Marshawn Lynch, uh, Courtney Cox, Vanessa Hudgens, and I think that's it. Yeah. Oh my God, it's a Greece reunion. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs>